Venus is a stunning and graceful planet, appearing serene and almost peaceful on the surface, cloaked in a cloud layer like a soft blanket. From an outside perspective, it's easy to see why it's named after Venus, the Roman goddess of love. However, beneath the clouds, the reality is vastly different. On the surface, you'd encounter scorching temperatures, volcanic activity, and a crushing atmosphere. Join us on this cosmic journey. Why Venus shouldn't be considered Earth's twin, our solar system's planets. Few places in our solar system are more dangerous, with an environment laced with acid, making exploration nearly impossible. But how much do we actually know about this mesmerizing yet hellish planet? The answer might surprise you. Hi. I'm Alex McColgan, and you're watching Astrum. What makes Venus so unique in our solar system? Get ready to learn everything you could ever want to know about Venus. Let's begin by zooming out to see how this planet fits into our solar system. Venus is the second planet from the Sun and is our closest neighbor. Its average distance from the Sun is 0.72 AU, or roughly 108 million kilometers. This distance doesn't vary much, as Venus has the least eccentric orbit, circling the Sun in almost a perfect circle. When Venus comes closest to Earth, it's the nearest of all the planets, only 41 million kilometers away. Interestingly, this isn't when Venus is brightest in our sky. When it's closest, we mostly see its night side, as it's positioned between us and the Sun. Still, it's visible due to sunlight refracting through its atmosphere. Venus is actually brightest when it's a crescent shape in the sky, making it the second brightest object we see at night after the moon. As a result, Venus is often mistaken for an unidentified flying object, UFO. In fact, U.S. President Jimmy Carter reported seeing a UFO in 1969, which was later suggested to be Venus. Many others have made the same mistake due to its striking brightness. I recently had the opportunity to observe Venus through a telescope, and the crescent shape was clearly visible. Since Venus orbits between Earth and the Sun, you might wonder if it ever eclipses the Sun from our point of view. The answer is yes, but it's a rare occurrence. Transits of Venus happen in pairs, eight years apart, but each pair only occurs about once every century. The most recent transit was in 2012, and if you missed it, the next one won't be until 2117. This rarity is due to Venus's orbit being slightly tilted relative to Earth's. Venus only aligns with Earth every 584 days or so, which, combined with its orbital tilt, makes transits infrequent and special, offering us the chance to see this event perhaps only once or twice in a lifetime. All the planets orbit the Sun in a counterclockwise direction, including Venus. But Venus is unique in that it rotates clockwise, meaning it has a retrograde rotation. Not only that, but Venus rotates incredibly slowly, taking 243 Earth days to complete one rotation, making it the slowest of any planet. In fact, a Venusian sidereal day, one complete rotation, is longer than a Venusian year, which lasts 224 Earth days. However, due to Venus's retrograde rotation, its solar day, from sunrise to sunrise, is much shorter, lasting 117 Earth days. This means you'd experience just under two days in a year on Venus. To give you a sense of its slow rotation, at the equator, Venus rotates at a mere 6.5 km per hour. This slow spin makes Venus the second most spherical object in the solar system after the Sun. Why Venus rotates backward compared to other planets is still unclear, but it could be due to a massive impact billions of years ago or perhaps tidal locking with the Sun. Despite these peculiarities, Venus's mass and size are similar to Earth's, which is why it's often called our sister or twin planet. Venus is one of the four inner terrestrial planets and is rocky like Earth. Its diameter is slightly smaller at 12,100 kilometers compared to Earth's 12,740 kilometers, and its density is close to at 5.3 gam centimeter sur versus Earth's 5.5 gram centimeter. As a result, Venus's gravity is only slightly weaker than Earth's, with a surface gravity of 8.9 meters per second square But that's where the similarities end. Venus's surface is an extreme environment. The atmospheric pressure on Venus is 92 times greater than on Earth, equivalent to being one kilometer underwater on Earth. The atmosphere is 93 times denser than ours, and since Venus is slightly smaller than Earth, this gas is packed tightly. The atmosphere consists mainly of carbon dioxide, and the clouds are full of sulfur dioxide, contributing to the strongest greenhouse effect in the solar system. 
Surface temperatures soar to 462 degrees Celsius on average, making Venus hotter than Mercury, despite being farther from the Sun. While Mercury has no atmosphere to trap heat, Venus retains its heat like a thermal flask, keeping temperatures constant even at night or near the poles. Winds on Venus's surface are slow, only a few kilometers per hour, but due to the dense atmosphere, they exert strong forces, shifting small rocks and dust. In contrast, winds at the cloud tops reach speeds of 300 kilometers per hour, circling the planet every four to five Earth days, making Venus seem to rotate much faster than it actually does. The cloud layer, made mostly of sulfur dioxide and sulfuric acid, sits above the CO2 atmosphere and reflects sunlight, allowing only 10% of it through to the surface. These clouds are also capable of producing lightning, although it's less common than on Earth. Recently, scientists discovered that Venus has a large vortex at its south pole, similar to Saturn's polar storm. The Venus vortex sits at an altitude of 59 kilometers, just above the cloud layer. Interestingly, at around 50 kilometers above the surface, the pressure and temperature are tolerable by Earth standards, and the gravity feels similar to Earth's. However, the air itself would be unbreathable for humans. Still, with an airtight vehicle, conditions could feel very much like Earth's at that altitude. Now, let's talk about the surface of Venus. Thanks to the efforts of Russian scientists during the 1960s to 80s, we have actual images of Venus's surface. The Venera 7 probe, launched in 1970, was the first to land on another planet and send back data, after revealing a surface temperature of 475 degrees Celsius. Subsequent missions, like Venera 9 and 13, sent back color images and detailed data about the planet's harsh conditions. Since then, radar mapping has provided us with high-definition images of Venus's surface, revealing a landscape dotted with large volcanoes, 167 of which are over 100 kilometers in diameter. Most of Venus's surface is made of cooled lava, with volcanic plains covering about 80% of the planet. Venus also has 900 impact craters, none smaller than 3 kilometers in diameter, as smaller objects burn up in its thick atmosphere before reaching the surface. Lastly, let's examine Venus's magnetosphere. Unlike Earth, Venus doesn't have its own magnetic field, which was surprising considering the planet's similar composition to Earth. Some scientists suggest this could be due to Venus not experiencing a massive impact in its history, unlike Earth, which had such an impact that formed the Moon and may have kick-started our magnetic field. Without a magnetic field, Venus is more exposed to solar and cosmic radiation, which interacts with its upper atmosphere, generating lightning and an induced magnetosphere. Solar winds also strip away lighter molecules, creating a tail behind Venus, much like a comet. Under the right conditions, this tail can even reach Earth when the planets align, although it's not visible to the naked eye. That wraps up our exploration of Venus. Thanks for joining us on this cosmic journey. Tell us your opinions in the comment section below. Don't forget to like, subscribe, and click the video on your screen for more mind-bending content. Until next time, keep gazing at the stars. This is Cosmic Inquiries, signing off.